Oh, we're live, babe. Oh, yeah. All right. Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. Let's get started. Today is a Q&A, last Monday of the month. So, oh, hold on a sec. Got it. It's mute. Mute. All right, guys, we're up. All right. Q&A, please, please, please type in. We'll leave comments on on YouTube, so we'll look there. As well as mostly, though, send into uh, hopefully you guys can send into the Zoom Q and A. So let's get started. Lisa, go ahead. Okay. So yes, like Ryan said, this is Q and A. So get your questions going, get them in, so we can answer them. And we're going to cover two topics that I feel like we get uh, a lot of repeat questions on. Um, and if you haven't watched our other previous Zooms, you know you'll see the ones on Q and A again. We try to do it the last Monday of every month, but it'll get a lot of your questions answered. We're happy to re-answer those, but um, you know. Just try to check it out to so we don't do that many repeats. Okay, so most common questions going on right now have to do with our, let's start with our sourcing. Okay. Or our, and our testing. Sure. Right. So we source everything I mean, worldwide, but we source based on purity and potency. Um, so really it doesn't necessarily matter where it comes from in a sense that we are sourcing the most purest and most potent um, ingredients. And then we further, when they come to, if they're outside of the U.S., but regardless, they are all tested with inside the U.S. We do third-party testing. Um, what other, I mean, we are certified CGMP guidelines. So you can talk a little bit more about our facilities being CGMP. So following those guidelines has to be in place with a CGMP certified facility. Um, go ahead and elaborate a little bit on that. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, exactly what Lisa said. So, um Really what it does is when it starts as a bulk ingredient, so as a powder, or, you know, however you're sourcing it, but yeah, pop, usually powder, you, you're going to test that powder. That, that powder will be tested for identity, potency, purity. So what that means is identity. It is what we say it is. Potency, it, it has how much of it in there is what we say it has in there. And then, of course, purity is contaminants, and that's the big one. And that varies. That can vary. But always you're going to do microbials. So that's the bacteria, your yeast. Uh, so your molds will always be tested. And that's just, guys, that's just in the bulk powder form, not even before you get, not even in, in the finished product yet. So we'll do that on, on the powders. We'll test for metals. We'll test for pesticides like glyphosate if, it, if there's a risk. And then once it goes into finished uh, product, then, of course, we do that basically all over again. And so you'll do identity, you'll do potency, you'll do purity, and then you'll do finished product heavy metal testing and pesticide testing, again, if applicable. So that will cover the testing side of things. And that is a lot. I mean, that's that should be at least the bare, that, in my mind, the bare minimum for any brand, any product that you use. And then, of course, it should be um, visible to you. You should be able to access those reports. CGMP, elaborate on those guys. So CGMP is um, just a what continuous it, quality. What does it stand for? Oh, yeah. Good manufacturing practices. So you're just making sure that your manufacturing facility is abiding by these very stringent, the very strict guidelines for manufacturing. They are essentially the same as what you would consider um, pharmaceutical manufacturing practices. They also abide by CGMP. Um, and there's now there, there are updates along the way with CGMP. So we're always, always making sure that we're sticking to and have the, the highest standards on those as well. Correct. And potency is a big deal because if you think about it, you could be taking a product that's not tested for the potency. So what they're saying is in it is not really in it. So not only are you wasting your time, but you're wasting your money. So those are very important things. Um, okay. And then another, oh, just elaborate on that. So there's a, a very popular um, supplement company. They are known as a very healthy, very organic, very whole food based, whole food based. And they're in all the health food stores all over um, the world. Yeah. So, they're in a lot of brick and mortar. Yes. They're probably one of the leaders. So yeah. I emailed them because I didn't see on their website. I was just doing some exploring and I did not see on their website any testing uh, results, any certificates. So I emailed the company. Um, I didn't hear back from them for like a, a week and a half later. Um, and I know our support is kicking butt uh, with shorter return times on that. But when I finally heard back from them, they told me that everything is indeed um, CGMP guidelines, third party tested, but they do not make the results available to the public. So I found that very interesting um, and raised a little bit of red flag with me because then I thought, why? Like, why would you not want to share your results of your product so everybody can see? So I just want you to remind you about like our full transparency here. Like, we have nothing to hide. We want you to know 
everything that's going on and everything that's in our products. So we make this all public knowledge. So I just want you to keep that in mind and make sure you're sharing that with others. Um, okay, then one more topic was um, natural versus synthetic ingredients. Because I get this come question um, often. Do you use synthetics or are all your products natural? So Ryan is going to kind of take that home a little bit. So I guess it can we can roll that other conversation right into this one. So that brand that was not publishing the data or the results of the testing is probably because sometimes when you use these natural um, whole food based ingredients, there is very, very, very little stability. What does that mean? Like shelf life, that very little, it starts to degrade rapidly. I mean, you see that even with plants and phytonutrients, things that like, as soon as they're clipped, as soon as they're harvested, I mean, they're already losing nutrients. They're already losing. So when you go and you put that into, when you grind it up into powder and you put it into a supplement, yeah, I mean, it's going to be most times very difficult for them to show any potency whatsoever. Um, and therefore, it's sort of, I think, misleading, right? Um, so when it comes to synthetic versus natural, we're always looking for what what is considered evidence-based. So there's some evidence to support the use of it in clinical literature, uh, as well as stability, which Lisa talked about with potency. It needs to have shelf life. It's just a fact. It just needs to be. And it needs that potency has to be able to last for at least the beyond use date, for at least as long as we say that that product is good for on the shelf in proper storage conditions. So yes, we do use, there will be times where we use synthetic ingredients because sometimes the synthetic ingredients offer superiority uh, to their natural counterparts. I mean, folate's a good example, the folic acid folate conversation. We do use a synthetic methylated form of folate. It's quatrifolic is the brand. We also use the L-methyl L-folate. I mean, it's a superior form, better bioavailability, has better stability, so on and so forth. And there's a, there's not, there's a numerous examples of, of what we do and how we, how we incorporate those into our products. But I mean, look, truthfully, when possible, when able, we're always going to choose the, the more natural form over the synthetic if, it, uh, if indeed it has the stability um right and it goes along with yeah. like not everything natural is healthy oh and not everything fair. synthetic is unhealthy like strychnine super natural right from the earth it's an organic and they'll kill you right so so you got to keep that in mind because we have this mental thought of like it has to be natural everything natural is good and it's not well and the good. inverse is also true whereas not everything synthetic is bad 100 percent. So, yep cool so, okay um i have a question about a 12 year old using some of the products um, so again, our supplements currently are dosed for adults 18 and older. With that said, does not necessarily mean uh, maybe this one's a 12 year old or whatnot cannot take them, but we have to defer to the pediatrician for proper dosing. So just take what you want uh, your child to possibly take, take it up with your pediatrician and see if they're okay with it and what dosing they recommend. Our kids take our supplements. We're careful with fat soluble because fat soluble can load, it can build up in the tissue and become toxic. Vitamin D is an example, A, D, E, and K, those are four main ones. But so yeah, the vitamin D3 with K2, you'd want to make sure you know those blood levels. That's an example. Anything with caffeine in young children, another area of caution. But beyond that, I mean, especially the reds, the greens, some of the, the collagen, the protein, I mean, the amino acids. We, Our children are 9 and 11, and we use it all the time. Yes. Uh, methylene blue skincare, possibly. Methylene. Yeah, it's already used. There's products on the market for right, it. Right, but she's asking oh, if we not. Mm. It's possible. Um, okay, can, oh, this is actually a good question. Um, can you explain the inconsistency in the multivitamin? The color changes over time, which is a huge concern as a distributor. So, and Ryan will be able to touch more on this, but there's there's botanicals in our... Um, in our ingredients, it's in our um, uh, proprietary blend. So the xanthine. We don't have proprietary blends, but no, I know it, it says it. I'm it kidding. I'm it kidding. There. It does say this. It says live good men's or women's yes. proprietary yes. blend, but it's broken down. Yes, yeah, yeah we tell you what's in it. But again, it's the botanicals in there. So right. those can change color over time. Also, in the women's, the iron in there can. But again, this also has to do with temperature, um, moisture, light. So a lot of times if you're taking it out and putting it in a pill container, it might happen. It's never happened to me. Which um, what are you talking about exactly? What has taking the, the change of I color? Mean, the change of color. I have not experienced that with mine. Um, I try to keep ours always like in a dark place. So even when I use my pill container and I sort them out, I, I make sure it's kept in a cool environment in a drawer. So it's not, it doesn't have all the light exposure that now in those little clear containers, they're getting light exposure. So and that question might be also asking because we just recently did a formula. We altered the formula slightly in the, in the vitamin. You'll see that the men's and the women's. We went from a 
um, DL alpha tocopherol vitamin E to a D alpha tocopherol vitamin E, which is the more natural form, like we just talked about. Um, and also, like Lisa said, the botanical. So it went from being a little bit darker to a lighter color. That might be exactly what they're, they're asking because it did change. But you're right. Those botanicals, those phytonutrients, yes. they do, the pigments can change. Right. So just remember, like when you do open up your bottle, like it's a 30 day supply. So you've already now exposed it to oxygen by opening it. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you are taking those twice a day for those 30 days, it's not opening it up taking a few, putting it away, then a week later, taking a couple more, because then you're just increasing that um, potential for oxidation. Right. And right? the stop storage conditions, like you said, a bathroom is a terrible place for any supplement or pharmaceutical product because of the heat and humidity. It just increases the degradation process. Things start to break down. Like you said, the oxidation occurs, can change color. By the end, don't forget their vegetable capsules too. So that those capsules aren't necessarily great barriers to heat and humidity. Right. Um, by the end of the year, what new products do you see being available in general, the type of things in 2024? Well, so I think really only by the end of the year, do we have our, um, E3. E3 revised. Yeah. And E3. essential oils. And essential oils. Um, cause again, you know, the whole manufacturing process, this whole process takes a lot of time. So once we could, you know, formulate something and we're, we're happy to, you know, with it, then you have to make it and, and, and bottle it. And uh, so it's a process. What do we see coming up in our future? A few things that we have, um, we do have the kids organic um, gummy multivitamin that is already in manufacture, um, a hormone supplement, a kind of a detox, mm -hmm. um, a, a gut supplement. Both two there. So we have a detox supplement on its own. We have a hormone, a hormone supplement on its own, supplement on a its gut supplement on its own. Gut. So I think the category we're focused on is gut health, brain health. Yes. We're really going to try to dial that those two in because of their. Yes, uh, even uh, focusing a little with bone health and getting oh, yeah. some calcium in there. So all those are like in the forefront of um, attacking. And a lot of times, as, as you know, with what we have so far, we try to make supplements that tackle a lot of things. So you're not necessarily having to single out so many individual supplements. So we do our best that we can to um, get as much as we can into one so that you know, reap the benefits of that. Um, my PSA is moving on. Mm -hmm. Okay. My PSA is high. Do we have anything that can help bring that down? I mean, for prostate health, we do have the lycopene in the men's multivitamin. Correct. Which really is just an anti anti strong antioxidant. that has some selectivity in the prostate tissue. Um, if you know your PSA is high, you're obviously already under care, which is a good thing. So, um, lycopene can help. There's actually, if you type in the benefits of lycopene, lycopene for prostate health, you'll, you'll see a number of studies showing benefit. Okay. Um, this is asking about an order place, still no tracking. Um, uh, Janie, check in your back office. You will not get an email with a tracking link, but if you log into your account and you click my order tab or, or history tab, you just, it, it, every order has a tracking link. So if for some reason nothing has appeared, you need to email support at livegood.com. They are the ones that have access into looking into all of it and can help you out. Um, Okay, uh, Mark, since it's a specific question directed to you, go ahead and email me at lisa at livegood.com. Um, this has to do with more warehouses opening. I mean, that's always a goal. And, and again, this is a whole process of finding them, right? Awesome. Yeah, the whole process. The Philippines so, is underway. We got the one in Germany, which was a lot. Um, but yes, we want to continue to add so um, our products can be more readily available everywhere. Um, the factor for um, capsule cannot be a vegetable capsule um, because of the contents inside of it, the oil base of it. Um, so bovine is, is the option that we have. Soft gel. The soft gel. Um, Daryl, go ahead and check out on our YouTube channel. And this goes for anybody with like specific questions. Like he's talking about um, supplements for diabetics. We have a whole Zoom on diabetics for um, things to take for diabetes and you know, blood sugar levels. We have that on blood pressure, cholesterol, heart health, um, mental health. So scroll through, make sure you listen to some of those. Um, I did not ask the company why they don't make results public, but that's a great question. I should do that. I will. 
how soon will we have the gift card option available? Not sure. That's a great question. Um, we will talk to our CEO about that one and hope to have an update on that for Friday. So if you don't join Friday's calls, that's the best place to hear company updates. <clears throat> Um, CBD pain relief cream is 100% TH free, so it can be released for international shipping. It's not the THC that's necessarily the problem, it's the CBD as well. So we're, we, every time we were shipping it internationally, I mean, there, it was just getting rejected. Just the, the, I know CBD is sold in many countries that we cannot currently ship it to. We hope that's changing. Um, we are continuing to look for, you know, a a way to make this happen. But again, this is not our decision. Of course, 100%, we want everybody to have everything that we sell. That's the goal. This person said earthquakes are natural, but not always healthy. <laughs> How, do you get to this? How do you get the blue stuff out of your mouth so you don't look like a smurf all day? So I've said, um, I've talked about this before, ways to minimize it. I've already had my methylene blue today, so I don't want to do it again and show you. Um, or can I? No, no. Wow. Um, so I take it, I fold the strip in half. I take it, I place it on the very back of my tongue horizontally, and then I just take a sip of water. It does not need to dissolve fully, fully in your mouth. It goes right down. If I have any blue, it's a very teeny, uh, like faint blue strip on the back of my tongue. So try that and see if it works for you. Um, some others put it in water. Uh, drink it with a straw, but you're still getting, uh, you know, blue in your mouth. It's just not as strong as when you let the um, film dissolve 100% on your tongue. Mm -hmm. Yes, methylene blue can be put in. Yeah, if somebody's folding it up and putting it in a capsule, that's fine. Or, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Any possibility of putting it into a capsule? Yes. Looking into it. Yes. Um, there's a couple uh, specific questions um, for some health topics. Just please email those to me because it's a little bit more in depth. Um, okay, another thing about a 17-year-old person. Again, I have to say that we're 18 plus. So just talk to their pediatrician. Um, the likeliness is yes, but we can't be the ones to say that. Any MSG in the products? No, and all of our products are non-GMO. Can creatine be taken if your main form of exercise is walking or hiking? Yes, so what we're trying to get across is that creatine is not just made, it's that we used to think, right? Or it's it used to be taught it as, muscle building, bodybuilding, men only. Um, it's not, it should be used by everybody. Not, and if you don't even want to think about the, the help with the lean muscle mass alone, it's got the brain health. I mean, we all need the creatine is in our brains and starts to decline as we age. So we need the creatine for our brain health, but um, whatever form of exercise you're doing, it, it's, or not doing, <laughs> it's beneficial for you. Good question came in about uh, dehydration with creatine and talked about having dry mouth, dry lips, or dry mucous membranes. And that's true with creatine. It does pull water into the cell. So the recommendation is roughly 80 ounces of water per day if you're on creatine. Don't know, that doesn't really apply to everybody. Like for most people like me that try to shoot for one ounce per pound of body weight, I'm almost 200 ounces of water per day, right? Or over actually, I weigh 210. So just find what works for you, but at a minimum 80 ounces of water a day is probably not bad advice. Right. Um, someone's asking what they could do to help stimulate bowel movements. Um, our coffee, mm -hmm. uh, magnesium, and also just making sure you are not um, deficient in your essentials. So the daily essentials pack and the coffee I recommend. One of the limiting factors of magnesium dosing usually is bowel, is, is, um, bowel motility right so bowel movements right? so it's like why can't i take more magnesium well you might, yeah you so yeah. go ahead and try that yeah you are absolutely i would just increase one capsule all a day per day like maybe go from two to three right another one maybe at, uh, before bed four okay um high quality whey protein shake yes it's yeah in manufacturing now yes chocolate flavor yes we didn't say that that's another one that's already basically done and approved all right so that yes that won't be ready 
till next first quarter next year. But it'll be ready shortly. It, it's funny though to go through the testing and all that. Like Lisa was saying, it does take a long time for me. It's design of your labels and your choice of pack materials, and then as well like all the testing, all that raw ingredient testing has to get done, and then you have to bring it in, and it's a whole thing. Once you prepared the protein powder, do you, um, I'm not really understanding the question, but once you mix it in water, I mean, you should be drinking it within 24 hours. Uh, you can, I guess you can what, freeze protein? it. Yeah. I mean, you can, if you're already pre-mixing it, you can freeze it. For, yeah, I guess I don't know. I asking that, but yeah, I wouldn't let it sit at room temperature for very long because again, that liquid format does not have preservative. Um, with gut health, are you leaning towards probiotics or a colostrum-like product? So Ooh, I like a standalone colostrum. We're looking at that. There is colostrum in our protein coming up. The chocolate protein. Yes, it, there is colostrum, but we also really like standalone colostrum. Also, um, the probiotic strands are a huge body of research right now. And also digestive enzymes, digestive enzymes. not just probiotics, prebiotics, probiotics, postbiotics, postbiotics. symbiotics. Yeah. Um, all of them, all, all of that whole category. So as you can imagine, just with all the your question, just how much goes into thinking about what would be the most robust yet efficacious supplement, right? Something that works. Right. Um, so that's practical. Yes. Practical. Question about gastric bypass, gastric sleeve. Mm -hmm. So you don't absorb things as well. So you do need to make sure you're getting all your daily essentials, um, and this is also something to discuss with your GI doctor to make sure things are um, okay with you. But when I have looked at like um, gastric bypass supplements versus our supplements, um, there, there's, no there's no real difference. They just want to make sure you're getting a high enough dose right. because your body needs it. Because again, you're not absorbing. So just as important too, when you're, when you're looking at those, is make sure that they're leaving out the bad stuff. So you, especially in the gastric bypass patients. Yes, you can mix the powders together based on your um, your Personal schedule, your, your taste preference. But yes, I have a few combinations that I always talk about that I love. Um, so you just kind of find what works for you. Want to run for um, a couple more and then wrap do it up. the reds help with high cholesterol? Well, check out our Zoom on high cholesterol so you can see all the well rounded yeah. supplements that you should be taking. Pre workout supplements, yes, the revised E3 mm -hmm. will be ready soon. That is. Pro the best pre-workout I've ever seen. And trust me, I get, yeah. I get, I don't know if what algorithms are tracking me, but I get a lot of right. pre-workout advertisements. And I, I was just talking to my brother this morning. He actually called me and he was like, Cyber Monday. He's like, I want to get this pre-workout. Um, and then he was telling me, uh, I'm like, oh, the ingredients look great. He's like, yeah, so it's on sale for $49. I was like, oh, why don't you just wait a couple weeks until ours is ready? Because ours has more in it, it's better. And obviously it's not going to cost as much. Sure. Um, for sleep, magnesium, CBD oil, and check out our sleep patches. Mm. Yeah, sorry, this person just came in late. Yes, whey protein powder um, will be launched at the first quarter of 2024. Um, any progress being made for shipments to Mexico? We're trying. Yes, we're trying. How long is something good for after preparing? The powders, if you, once you're mixing in liquid, it should be 24 hours. Where are these Zooms located? On our YouTube channel. Um, if you don't know our YouTube channel, you can just go to the website, click on the very, scroll all the way down, and you'll see the little um, YouTube icon. Mm -hmm. Make sure- you playlists, playlists, and then you can see all the, all the topics. Yes, we try to um, organize it. So when you click on the playlist, um, you will see all of our product Zoom topics. Because if not, you're going to go through and you're going to get every Thursday and Friday Zooms as well. So make sure you hit the playlist. Um, household cleaners, yes, coming. Vitamin C and calcium, those will be incorporated. Um, help with weight loss. I'm going to go ahead and email me. Skincare is another new one. Yes. That, yeah. that we're working on. Yes. That'll be the first quarter of 2024 as well. I'm trying to get through. That's it. Let's wrap it up. 25 uh, minutes. Okay. After. I didn't go over YouTube though. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, streaming live and your questions have not been answered, please just go ahead and email them to me. Um, hold on. Oh, my, my partner takes one magnesium on the days he eats a banana, not wanting to take too much. That, um, I wouldn't worry about that. No. One banana a day. No concern. 
there is some magnesium, but not nothing that you would be concerned about. Um, what's the average expected length of time before D3 starts working my system? That's a great question, but it's so individual. So um, there's been a lot of research that says, give it six months until you retest. I know, but they say, yeah. I know, but that's what they, they say with the vitamin D. So um, if you're seeing your doctor regularly and getting these tests, have a blood test after three months of supplementing with, with um, vitamin D3. See how you're doing. See if you need to increase that dose at all. So try to find that right sweet spot till you hit your, the dosing, I mean, the um, level that you want, and then find that maintenance dose, which maintenance dose can just easily be at one of our 2000 international units. Great study just came out and showed that the benefits of vitamin D need to be at 40 nanograms per ml blood work, blood level. So we're saying most supplements that do not contain enough vitamin D. So again, that's another benefit of ours that why we chose 2000 units. Um, this is just a general question. I kind of like it though. What are the key features that set live good products apart from others in the market? So there's other great quality supplements on the market and we not only match those, but we stand by our superiority in the sense of the ingredients. Well, not well, everything. I would just say three, quality, quality, price and transparency. Right. So those three Flat things out. alone. So you're going to take maybe something, a product very similar to ours, similar quality, um, similar testing, I guarantee you ours is significantly less in, in, in a price. And that's the whole, you know, um, business format with live good is getting you, we're not marking up our prices crazy like everybody else is. And I, and I actually just did a little post on this for cyber Monday today. Why don't we do sales? You were getting a sale every single time. Like people run sales because clearly they mark their products up way too much that they can go sales here and out. Ours are marked just above. So we don't really have any flexibility to go lower. So really sets us um, apart from others. Trying to get through a few more before Facts. we say goodbye. Yes, powders taken together. Okay. All right, I'm gonna call it at that because I don't want to keep you guys long. If your answers did, the your questions didn't get answered, please email me, lisa at livegood.com. And again, we do a Q&A, live Q&A, the last Monday of every month. So questions come up, make sure you join next month and fire away. Cool. Awesome. Y'all, we'll see you next time.